Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another thing where I talk about things. Today, I would like to talk about malls, the death of malls. Uh, some malls in my area specifically, just because I've been thinking about these. Uh, they're kind of interesting. Um, malls used to be really popular. Back in the 70s, uh, there were some that were popping up all over the place. It was a new phenomenon. And, uh, and a lot of them that were seeing success were seeing a lot of success. Uh, but we had three very interesting malls, some of which with a lot of history and that did really well at first, that have died uh, since the recession rolled around. And of course the recession didn't actually kill them, the recession was just a coup de grace. Uh, each of these malls all died for their own very particular reasons, and uh, one of them, only one of them was really very sad. Uh, the other two totally deserved it. And anyway, I just thought it would be interesting to talk about these malls and, and what happened. Uh, the first mall that I want to talk about, I actually never really went to when I was a kid. Uh, this one, I think, kind of fell out of popularity back when I was young, so I remember, I remember virtually nothing about it. Maybe just a little bit of talk about the controversy surrounding it before it closed. Uh, but essentially, though, this mall was built uh, along the highway system back when uh, the downtown area was being remodeled, uh, previously to the, the advent of these malls. The downtown area... Uh, was being was the downtown area was where you went to shop you know you'd go and pick up all your retail stuff from downtown because that's where all the stores were and there's still quite a lot of stores downtown but just not nearly as many as as there were nowadays you go to you go downtown to go to uh, restaurants and things like that or to see the sites you know statues fountains uh stuff like that i live in the midwest we have statues of cows cows and horses and and no statues of wheat but someone should get on this this is an idea i think so Fountains, fountain, wait, wheat fountains. Ah, that's what we need. I need to contact the city. But anyway, though, so uh, so yeah, so wheat fountains aside, that's where you used to go. But uh, while the city was under development, they they built this uh, this new mall, which we're going to dub Murder Mall, because for a little while Murder Mall did really well, <laughs> and you can imagine maybe why this one got turned down, why this one fell, uh, if based on this name I'm giving it. But uh, Murder Mall did really well for a little while because everyone was coming uh, along the highway system and they would just drive on down to Murder Mall to shop. And, uh, and that was great. But then uh, Murder Mall itself actually didn't have a lot of people living around it. It was, it was surviving mostly based on the fact that it was near the highway system. Uh, I believe this was kind of an older mall. I think it was still built uh, around the 70s boom or so. But uh, Murder Mall went on for a while, but the local area began to actually decay a little bit, and you wound up with a little bit more crime and a little bit more trouble. And they started hiring tougher security guards to guard the places. And one of the big mistakes that Murder Mall made, and, and these days, uh, uh, in fact, I believe all of our local malls uh, learn from this, and I'll get to this. One of the big mistakes that Murder Mall made at the time was they allowed their security guards to carry live weapons. Yes, they carried firearms. So uh, this this was an interesting choice that led to a uh, murder, hence Murder Mall. Uh, what happened was eventually one day a kid went into Funko, an arcade, uh, or Fun Funko Land or Fun Land, I can't remember exactly what the thing used to be named. There was one in my local area, I used to go down there all the time when I was very young. But anyway though, uh, he went down to the local arcade and this kid I guess got angry or did something and he broke the screen on one of the arcade games. So the security came to detain the kid, and not wanting to be collared and forced to pay for the damages, the kid made a run for it. He managed to get outside the mall, he ran out to the parking lot, and then one of the guards drew a weapon and just shot the kid dead in the parking lot over a broken video game screen. So this kid died, uh, and then after that, because you had to actually drive out of your local area to get into uh, Murder Mall, people stopped driving out of their local area to get to Murder Mall. They decided they would rather go to just about any other mall. Uh, you know, any mall where your security guards might shoot your kids is a terrible mall. So uh, it wasn't too long after that that, that Murder Mall uh, fell and closed. And I believe that they actually died before the recession because of the murder. So <laughs> Murder Mall, Murder Mall died. Uh, I didn't really know Murder Mall very well. I never went to Murder Mall. Uh, I don't think that my parents really ever shopped at Murder Mall. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Murder Mall closed rightfully. The second one, the second mall, uh, which I have dubbed Dirt Mall, uh, is one that Alan and I actually did a video on. We have uh, Alan Hour Dirt Mall, if you want to go see what that mall looked like about a week before it closed. Um, it's, a, it's a weird video, but such are the Alan Hours. Uh, anyway, though, Dirt Mall was actually one of the earliest malls ever built, and, and it was really successful for a little while. But because it was one of the first malls ever built, uh, it didn't have a lot of space for large anchor stores. They hadn't really quite figured out the system for survival. Um, the current prevailing mall has like four anchor stores and uh, there's a bunch of other little stores inside, but it's always had a very convenient and navigable layout. Uh, 
Dirt Mall, Dirt Mall only had the two. And a lot of malls actually, they die uh, not too long after they lose their anchor malls, but Mer uh, uh, Dirt Mall worked in reverse. Dirt Mall was strange because uh, they gradually rotted from the inside out. And part of the reason they think that this might have happened was because uh, Dirt Mall and some of the other malls that were nearby all had the exact same department stores. Uh, for example, one of the developers who kind of looked back on the whole thing, he goes, yeah, now that I think about it, both of those malls were like within an hour's drive of each other, and they both had a Spencer's gift. And I can't imagine why people would like uh, not just go to the closest Spencer's gifts if they wanted, like both, both, both stores carried the same thing, there would be no reason to go to the further place. So uh, Dirt Mall was a little further off the beaten path. Um, you could still get there by highway, but it was a less convenient highway route than the mall that did survive. Uh, the mall that survived, you can actually uh, just get right off the highway and just uh, go there, no problem. So Dirt Mall had a, lot of, had a lot of redundant stores, and gradually those redundant stores just started to die off. And, and uh, Dirt Mall actually kind of died from the inside out. But because it was so old, this is one that like the local people have lamented its death for a very long time. Like everyone looks at that as like one of the saddest uh, uh, mall deaths in, in local memory. Because, uh, you know, you go down there and it used to be that they had like Santa and stuff like that down there. And they had all these lights that they put up and they were like old timey street lights, which was kind of neat. Like you would walk down the hallways and they just had all these old timey street lights down the way. They had this great big fountain in the center of it. So I remember actually going down to, uh, to Dirt Mall all the time when I was young. Like my family used to shop at Dirt Mall fairly often. They had train stores and train stores are another interesting thing uh, because uh, they don't, I don't really see, I don't like see a lot of model train stores anymore, but when I was little, I got a bit into model trains. So, uh, so I used to go down to Dirt Mall and you could find like, there was a great big train store that had all these trains running. And I thought that was just the coolest thing. You'd go and you'd see all the trains set up and they'd sell you train tracks. And then you'd take them home and you'd get in your basement. And, uh, and as a child, you didn't understand how they made those train tracks look so cool. So you would sit there and you would just build a loop and then you would make the train drive in circles and you'd say, ah, oh, that is not as cool as what they had at the store, man. They didn't tell me I was going to have to spend days, maybe even make a career out of building trains to get something this awesome. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I went on to, like, enjoy models uh, throughout most of my life. Once I kind of found, I don't know, I was one of those train nerds and continued to be. But, uh, but yeah, they had a great big train store down at Metcalf Mall. Uh, Metcalf, Metcalf Mall is actually Dirt Mall, Metcalf Mall. Uh, the other one, the other one, uh, Murder Mall, was uh, Indian Creek, I believe? Indian Springs. Indian Springs. Indian Springs. Uh, Murder Mall... Dirt Mall, Dirt Mall, Dirt Mall, yes, but anyway though, so Metcalf Mall, Dirt Mall, it, uh, it perished slowly and it perished from the inside. When Alan and I went down there, you could tell that they were still on their last legs. They were trying to hold on, just desperately, but the recession was what really, what really just finished them off. I mean, like, there were people in there essentially selling beads, virtually every single store that was open had a sign up that said, uh, no credit cards, please. There was like this really shady place selling pets, you know, with the sign up, no kids, no credit cards, uh, do not come in here if you, uh, if you are with the IRS, like that sort of thing. And, and they were just desperately trying to stay open. Pretty much the only people who went down there anymore were, were mall walkers, the type of people who like to walk around and get a little bit of exercise in the uh, temperature controlled setting of the mall. You know, and it was kind of funny because they would go down there and like, be, because the mall was empty and nobody shopped there, they were super unabashed about the whole thing. They were just down there in like sweatpants and headbands and things like that, just power walking around the mall. Uh, so, so those guys really liked that, but Metcalf itself uh, perished. They still had a movie theater and I had a friend who worked at their movie theater for a little while, but it was a very small uh, kind of, you know, they, they tried to pick up slightly more obscure movies so they wouldn't be competing with the bigger outlets or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, but that one just died very gradually, very slowly, sad mall, very old mall, very historic mall, uh, and now they're having tons of fights over what they want to do with that mall. So uh, Metcalf Mall, Dirt Mall, dead, dead, dead. The third mall, the third mall, uh, which I have dubbed the Mall of Hubris, the Mall of Great Hubris, uh, was the Great Mall of the Ozarks, or no, Great Mall of the Great Plain, Great Mall, Great Mall, I don't know, it's the Great Mall. They called it the Great Mall. And the reason why they called it the Great Mall was not because it was very great, but because it was 750,000 square feet of mall. That was nearly a million feet of mall, but they couldn't quite afford a million feet of mall, so they settled for, so they settled for three quarters of a million feet of mall. And uh, what killed them in the end was that there was no use for three quarters of a million feet of mall. Uh, the local area actually could not shop enough to keep that mall alive. 
Um, it was a terrible, terrible idea. The people who built this thing, they started off with like really big ideas for what they wanted to do with it. They were saying like, oh, we're gonna make this Kansas theme. Like, you know, you're gonna go down there and like the entryways will be covered wagons. And uh, you know, you'll walk in and there'll be like, uh, they were gonna have tickers telling you like the local grain prices and stuff like that. Like there's gonna be a whole bunch of, of Kansas theme. So you could tell that there was a lot of artsy fartsy thinking going into this mall in the first place. Um, but what they eventually did though is they decided to scrap all that, they threw all that out, all that theme stuff out, and they came in with some completely other idea. And what this, what this idea was, in my opinion, is why Great Mall deserved to die more than any other mall, the Mall of Great Hubris. Uh, it deserved to die because what they did instead was they put down striped carpet. And this wasn't just any kind of striped carpet. No, this was the kind of striped carpet that created an optical illusion as you walked. Where if you weren't, like, if you weren't, if you were looking at it just right, then it developed this kind of, uh, like, vomit-inducing 3D pattern. And so you would, like, walk around and just get dizzy. And I remember being a kid, uh, walking in circles around this mall. Like, you, it was a huge mall, and so it was really hard to find the stores you were looking for sometimes. Uh, and plus, too, my, I remember my parents used to complain that the prices really weren't very good because it was a huge mall and so it was really expensive to actually, like, buy a shop there. But I remember being a kid and occasionally um, asking my parents to, like, stop so that I could sit down for a little while <laughs> and, uh, and, just, and just, like, recover my, uh, my faculties because I would sit there. Uh, you know, like, when you're a kid, you get that sort of thing. Like, you notice that optical illusion and you think to yourself, like, oh, that's cool. And so you walk around doing this optical illusion to yourself for long enough and eventually you just get sick. So I used to make myself sick when I was a kid walking around uh, the Mall of Great Hubris. And, uh, and my, uh, my parents eventually just quit taking us to the Mall of Great Hubris uh, for, for that reason among others. Um, it's just not very good when you take your kids to a place and they, they feel sick just from walking around. But the Mall of Great Hubris was actually fairly amazing as far as the, as far as the scope. I mean, uh, it was insane to believe that it ever would have been profitable. But they had such an amazing amount of space. Like, uh, they had a, a fully blown theater down there. And we did go down there to uh, uh, see movies. I threw up at that one movie there. I, something, just man, I have no, and I have like very few happy memories of the Mall of Great Hubris. <laughs> I went to go see Anastasia there once, and I remember sitting there and then throwing up. And it might have been because of the carpet, or it might have been something I ate. Um, but I remember my uncle was there at the time, and he joked, and he goes, "Oh, you threw up during the movie." He goes, "You should go to the counter and tell them that you want your money back because the movie was that bad." And, uh, and yeah, but again, this was like, I was very young. I can't remember how old I was, but I just, I just remember like throwing up and I'm like, oh, that, <laughs> that wasn't good. So, uh, yes, but they had an enormous movie theater aside and well, maybe not enormous, but they had a functional movie theater. Uh, they also had a, uh, uh, like a jungle gyms sort of thing. I can't remember what it was actually called, but it was like a, uh, uh, oh, like a big kids, like a kids uh, theme park kind of thing. Like they had those little mini roller coasters and a couple of other things. Like they had rides, you know, that you could ride on as long as they weren't too tall to bump up against the ceiling. And, and I remember that used to be all the craze. And in the past, like most places had to buy their own space to do that. Like they had to buy a fairly large area and just, and just work with that. But this place just bought, a, bought like a store in the mall. So there was this great big spot in the mall that, that they worked out of. So that was another one. They did, they did birthday parties and they actually hung on there for a while because uh, a lot of other places that offered that same thing closed down. I mean like Chuck E. Cheese's was one of the closest things that was, that was available on a large scale. And I think Chuck E. Cheese's has been dying off as well. I mean like video games being available online on home consoles has really killed the arcade thing. So Chuck E. Cheese, it's like come down to Chuck E. Cheese. You can pay money to play games that are less amazing than the games on your console at home. Yeah. Uh, and pizza! Pizza! You could just order pizza to your home, but we have Chuck E. Cheese pizza! So, uh, so yes, uh, there, there's kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese in a way. But it wound up being one of the few places in the area that still did that kind of thing. And uh, so it, it hung on there for a little while. And that's actually what's kind of interesting is, is there's a few places like you hear about like, oh, so-and-so died and so-and-so died. and so Like there would be a bunch of different things that would pop up as sort of a fad. And then they would all die. And then later on, like a couple of other years, somebody would be like, you know, they, they would get nostalgic for whatever that kind of store was. And they'd be like, oh man, none of those stores exist in the area anymore. Hey, what if I run out a bunch of space and I just make another one of those stores? And then they actually wind up having the full audience because every other place died and gave up on that type of business. Um, there's, there's actually an arcade in town that's done exactly that. Um, well, there's, there's one or two arcades. One of them sells liquor. Actually, they might both sell liquor. 
I don't know. <laughs> but the point is, the point is, uh, you know, sometimes that stuff doesn't work and sometimes it doesn't. But that was one that just hung on there until all the competitors died. And then that continued to survive because all its competitors were dead and it just had all the business. Uh, and there was also another, they had indoor uh, mini golf, which was kind of cool. Like you went in there and what they did is they put up neon lights. And so you could run around with like a, well, like the club would be neon and the balls would be neon and you would go and, and play, you know, neon miniature golf. And that was a pretty neat setup. Uh, they also had bowling down there. And, uh, and of course, I think uh, a giant coat store. And the giant coat store, I used to hate the giant coat store because uh, my parents were always very bad about shopping with kids in that, uh, in that kids are super impatient and my parents used to be really particular about buying coats because coats are expensive. So I remember like being really, really bored in the coat store. And, uh, and they would just put everything, like they, they packed the floors in this coat store, I remember when they first opened. Because on the opening day at the Mall of Great Hubris, uh, they were expecting about 50,000 customers and they got 70,000. And so their minds must have been blown. They were just like, oh man, this is way more people than we expected. Like, this is great, this is the big opening day. And then uh, exactly like I think about a year later, they were suing their tenants for back rent because, uh, because there were so, few, there were so few, few people who came in. Like everyone was really excited to come into the mall and to see what it was all about. And then after they got to see what it was all about, they realized it really wasn't that great. And, uh, and, and Greg threw up and so, you know, everyone in solidarity with my, with my puking decided never to go again. So, uh, yes, the Mall of Great Hubris. Sad times. Sad times for the Mall of Great Hubris. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, almost immediately they were, they were, uh, they didn't make it for very long at all before they started to die. And, uh, and the Mall of Great Hubris is, is interesting because it hung on there for a long time and because it offered so much space, periodically you would see things pop up there that were interesting or, I mean, like, I, I could just imagine the mindset of this. They would look at the Mall of Great Hubris and they would say, like, oh, man, like, this is a huge space available fairly cheap. And then they would, they would uh, rent the space and then they would just die. I'm not sure what exactly it was about the Mall of Great Hubris that uh, few stores could manage to survive there. Part of it was that, like I say, uh, they assumed that that area could have financially supported a quarter of a million square feet of mall. Uh, that's how much they think that was was possible, and they were trying to support three times that. So they were doomed to fail from the very start. It was way over ambitious. It was just foolish. Uh, but but some of those places, though, like I say, it's it's a little funny that they that they didn't make it. But one thing that they did, though, because the the, the area got cheap, was they moved the DMV into the Mall of Great Hubris. And uh, and the last time I went to the Mall of Great Hubris, it was to go and deal with the DMV. And uh, and I remember that being kind of funny because they'd closed down all the stores and so really it was just like this giant this giant uh like 750 square foot mall and i was just like walking all around it trying to figure out like all right which one of these is not closed and is the dmv <laughs> because you'd just be going along and it was like just one of these one of these departments is the dmv one of these things is the dmv uh, but finally, though, when they when they closed down, what they did is they blocked off most of the area, and then they just had a sign, and they were like, "The DMV is this way," because the DMV was the only thing that was still operating. Like to the last day, the DMV was one of the only departments still open because the DMV was funded by the government. The government, no, does not care whether or not the DMV is profitable. It's gonna survive. It's gonna endure. So they just kept renting out of out of the out of the Mall of Great Hubris. So yes. Um, Someone in the comments, though, of the Great Mall thing, I remember them saying, like, uh, oh, man, like, no wonder Greg gets a little pessimistic about the economy sometimes. Uh, that is one of the things. There's a lot of places that closed. Since, since the recession, there's a lot of places that I used to really like that closed down. And, uh, and there were a few of them that were, like, restaurants where I got to know the people that worked at them. And that, you know, was too bad. But, uh, but like I say, the malls in our area uh, all closed for totally legitimate reasons. I think that potentially the Metcalf Mall, uh, the Dirt Mall, is the only one that, that will end up closing. Uh, you know, just just because of financial reasons exclusively, and not because it was way overblown. I mean, there was there was a bit of bad development you could blame, but but you know, frankly, it survived for it survived for many decades before finally going down, and it still had its anchor store. So you know, by all rights, it it might have had might have had some life in it. Who knows? It might have survived. It kind of went downhill. But one of them was the Sears, and like Sears was dying as well. 
But uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, too, if you, if you wonder, uh, why do I call the Metcalf Mall the Dirt Mall? If you look up Metcalf Mall, you'll find that it is famous for its, uh, its fountain. It had like a three-story fountain that it did. Uh, and so why not call it the Fountain Mall? And it's just because the Allen Hour thing, like we just called it Dirt Mall. Uh, but yeah, anyway, though. So those are the malls in my area. Uh, it's a similar story across a lot of the United States because a lot of, uh, when malls became a big thing, they got to be a boom. A lot of malls were built, and then after the 70s, like, as the boom kind of wore, wore down, um, you know, recessions and economic trouble killed off a ton of them. So this was, you know, the death, the death, the death of local malls. But anyway, though, I suppose that'll be it for today. So thanks for joining me, everybody. I will catch you all next time.